long. I get ready for my first check ride, which is a flying test. It was like at the end of my first or second month there. Blue skies and tailwind kind of day. I go fly, boom, knock it out of the park. It went great. I'm coming up now at the end of the second month, going into my uh, second flight, and I get out to this beautiful T-37B tweet, and the jet won't start. You've got to be kidding me. I'm on one of the biggest rides of my life. It counts for the most points, and it's not going to start. It's frustrating, right? It's a headwind. Time is going. Fuel is going. I'm figuring this out. I've got an instructor sitting next to me watching every decision and every judgment that I'm making. Get the crew chief out there. Jets get started. Lo and behold, if it could go wrong, it did. We ended up with a hydraulic leak. I ended up with a fuel leak. I ended up having a problem with the electrical system. We had to recycle the generators this whole time. I'm losing time. The fuel gauge is counting down, and the instructor's watching me, seeing how is she going to handle this. We finally get ourselves out to the runway and take off, and it is, again, a blue sky and tailwind kind of day. And it was a fun sortie, too. We were doing acrobatics, loops and rolls, things called Immelmans and split S's, and I felt great when I landed. We get down and the instructor says, all right, go ahead and grab a snack, use the restroom, you'll come back, I'll give you your grade. But I want to give you a moment to collect your thoughts. What are you talking about? He looks right at me, he says, you failed the ride. You failed the ride. I knew in that moment, right, that I was one step closer to not graduating pilot training, and I knew for me in that moment that I had lost my opportunity to ever fly a fighter aircraft. He says, you had a really great flight. Your flying was good. Your acrobatics were good. But on takeoff, your flaps were out of tolerance by 2%. 2% is the width of the needle on the gauge. For any pilots in the audience, flaps are important. They're the little part of the wing you hear when your airline goes right before takeoff, right? And the wing goes down. That's the flaps. Flaps come down to generate lift. Lift is important if you would like to safely lift away from the ground. So what I had done was a huge mistake, an error, a dangerous mistake. I had gone against checklists and process and the procedure that I knew. It was not okay, and he had to fail me. And I went back. I couldn't stop by the classroom. I had to keep a stiff upper lip. I went to my room in the dormitory, and I put my head in the pillow, and I cried like a baby. Snot, mascara, Kleenex. All right, I was verklempt. I had made that decision in that moment that if I can't be a fighter pilot and I'm that much closer to washing out of pilot training, I don't want to do it. I'm going to quit. I stand up in front of you and I'm telling you, in my mind, I had made the decision that I was going to quit pilot training. I thought about calling my mom and dad, but I didn't have the courage to tell them that I had lost their dream, right? Because my dream had become their dream all along. I was there because they had helped me get there. So I did the next thing. I called Sue Ross. Sue Ross was my mentor at the time. I got to know her when I was 17 years old as a young cadet at the Air Force Academy. She was my English teacher. But more than that, Sue Ross had been a woman pilot in the military in the 80s. Like, she was like Yoda, right? <laughs> I knew Sue was going to have the answer. I said, Sue, I failed. I'm quitting. It's over. She said, well, what did you, why did you fail? I said, well, the jet wouldn't start. She said, that's not why you didn't fail. Why did you fail? I said, well, the hydraulics and fuel and the generators and blah, blah, blah. She said, that's not why you failed. Why did you fail? I said, well, Sue, my flaps were out of tolerance by 2%, and it was silent, like crickets. And finally she said, well, are you going to do that again tomorrow? Are you going to do that again tomorrow? And I fought her. I can't possibly go fly again tomorrow. How do I get back in the jet? How do I face my peers? I'm no good. How do I get back in the cockpit and make this happen? But you know the beauty of it is be Sue Ross, she talked me off the ledge, right? She talked me off the ledge. And in that moment, I learned an extraordinarily valuable lesson. So this fighter pilot, former fighter squadron commander, Thunderbird pilot, learned this, that failure is the price of entry for achieving something great. Failure is the price of entry for achieving something great. Going after big dreams and gnarly dreams, there's going to be bumps and turns in the road. There's going to be times you have to get back up on the horse or back into the cockpit the next day, even when you, you might not want to. The beauty, I think, of failure, too, is that you come away with it a lot more focused, a lot more determined and committed, and I think also a lot more humble. And I think we can all agree that those are some pretty awesome characteristics to have. And so when we talk about headwinds, failure is that first one. 
it's important that we take responsibility, right? I was sitting there trying to make excuses, but it was my job to own it and fix it. And I went in that next day and I flew that sortie and I made sure I looked all my peers in the eyes and I told them what I had done so that they didn't make that same mistake. The value of networks. Nurture those networks now so that when you need them, they're there, okay? Be that person for somebody else. Be that Sue Ross who helps somebody get back into that OR the next day, right? When it might not have gone perfect. You got to be that person. And that's the beauty of events like this. The people you're meeting on your left or your right, chances are someone has done it, seen it, succeeded at it, failed at it before. Share those things. And always remember to focus on the long game. Here's the thing. I fell flat on my face across the starting line. And I had used my mulligan, no doubt about it. But I still had 10 more months to get it right. 